Hello, you people with a pedal board and possibly people with a pedal board on a budget. Not necessarily because the product we're looking at now isn't just for the budget-minded player because it's actually, you know, gooder than budget-minded stuff. But before you go into budget, before we go into budget-minded stuff, let me tell you what I'm using and uh, what, what I trust. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you. So, Chucks. That's the Chux DC7. If you are into pedal boards and you have bigger boards and you ha and uh, money is no issue, then you're gonna go and get the Chux DC7. This is hot shit. This is 250, 260 bucks. Seven outputs. Each of them can be switched to 9, 12, 15, 18. At 9 volt, you got 660 milliamps. This has overload protection. This has. Uh, it shows you with flashy lights whether each output has too much on it. Blah blah blah. Uh, has a USB chargey, uses uh, RCA outputs to 9 volt, um, and it can be modularly expanded with the 4 or the 8. So when you buy this, nice and flat, uh, switching volt, so something switching power supply that means they are light and better. Switching is better. Um, then you can expand it with the four or the eight. And the expansion is the great thing because seven pedals, hmm, of course you can daisy chain, okay, but that's not gonna cover a lot of the bigger boards. But that's also 250 bucks, 100 bucks. This is, I hear my cat doing crap in the kitchen. Um, this is when money is no issue. And I would always say, get the chocks if money is not an issue. And cheaper power supplies, in the past, in my experience, didn't necessarily deliver. A lot of the outputs weren't isolated. If you don't have isolation, you could have a problem, especially with digital pedals that pull a lot of milliamps. When you have them on a non-isolated output with another pedal, especially another digital pedal, you get, you get problems. And especially on less expensive power supplies. They're also less shielded, all that stuff. Um, now, Harley Benton isn't necessarily known for having the most outrageously amazing power supplies. It's the power supply you buy when you're on a budget. And let's say you're starting out building a board. What are you going to invest in a power supply? 250 bucks? No, you're not. You might invest 50 to 60 bucks. So you're going to go and get the ISO 1AC Pro Modular. Five outputs, which is probably absolutely fine for what you're going to do with your early board. But then we look at it and we see, wait a second, each output has 500 freaking milliamps. These new power supplies nowadays, they're not kidding around. It's no more 100 milliamps. No, no. Each of these can power some of the most power hungry pedals on the market. Something like the Chase Bliss CMX 1978. It eats 500 milliamps because it needs to move the faders. Are you going to power this 1,000 euro pedal with this? You might not because you're probably a snob. You're probably a snob. That's what I'm trying to say. But you could because I did and it works. Five outputs is probably going to be good enough. It's not going to kill your budget with 59 euro. But what if you then buy more pedals? Of course, with 500 milliamps per output, you could say I'm daisy chaining, which trust me for some... Analog pedals, that's fine. Even a digital pedal with an analog pedal. It always depends on the combination. Trial and error is your friend there. So with these 2,500 milliamps right here, you can power almost any board. You just have to be clever about the uh, combinations. Before I forget, packaging very Apple-like. Very cool, very cool boxes. The whole thing feels actually pretty high value, I gotta say that. Of course, you throw the box away, all that, but it kind of matters, I think. Now, you plug in the big lead in here. It's not the longest cable that's included, but that's fine. And this is light, so it's a switching power supply. But then what's this for? Because it comes with this adapter. Well, if you wanna expand, spend another 59 bucks, put that under your pedal board, and then you have 10 500 milliamp outputs, which is pretty much unheard of and ridiculous. That's like 10 times 500, it's like 
5,000 milliamps. Ho, 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 ho. 5,000 milliamps, dude. That's cool. Yeah, cool. No, I didn't watch the uh, Beavis and Butthead movie lately. No, I did not. So that's cool. And you know what? If I had a third one, plug a third one in. 7,500 milliamps at 15,500 milliamp output. It's ridiculous. All for still less than the chocks. And three of these could fit under a 60 centimeter board. Now you're going to see, but, but this is only 9 volt. Realistically, with the thousands of pedals that I've tested and had here, extremely rarely did I have 12 volt. Sometimes you have an 18 volt pedal, but that's more 9 to 18. 18 is optional. And if you run it at 18, you have a little bit more headroom. I never heard a difference. Maybe my ears are shot. I don't know, but it never mattered to me. Nine volts where it's at. If the pedal needs 12, it's nice to have a 12 volt output. 18 is for those boutique pedals where the fairy dusty thing tells you to use 18 volt. But in case you needed that, you can buy for 10 bucks more the ISO 2 AC Pro Modular. Same deal, but we have three outputs that can be switched with a switch to nine volt right here. And we have two outputs that can be switched to 18 volts. Now, the thing that the thing doesn't tell you and what the product page at Toman doesn't tell you is that it's not 300 milliamps at 18 volts. It's 300 milliamps each at 9 volt. So be careful. When you're switching it to 12, that goes down a bit. Can't tell you how much. At 18, it goes down 15%. So when you switch these two outputs to 18 volt, they will only have 150 milliamps. However, that's more than enough for those types of compressors or overdrives or boosts that want to run at 18 volts because usually they're going to eat 9 milliamps or 15 milliamps or whatever or 40. Uh, it's not going to not work. Okay, so 150 is still quite a bit for the 18 volt pedals. But just to let you know, once you switch to 12 and 18, it's not, they, they should label this on here. They should say uh, right on the right here, um, so and so many milliamps at 12 volt, so and so many milliamps at 18 volt, as the chocks does right there at the bottom, which is nice. Hardy Benton, please learn from that because that would inform us about how to use this. So I used it all at 19 volt in a little uh, test I made at 19 volt. Did I say that? Cat, what are you doing? Jumping up there, thank you. You don't want to know where he is and what he's doing with the guitars. I, I, I don't want to. Um, so I ran everything at nine. I threw a 10 pedal pedal board at these. Uh, meaning nine pedals and a big switcher. I threw the kitchen sink at this, including the 500 milliamp sucking Chase Bliss pedal, a very power hungry R1 from Walrus Audio, a DD200 from Boss. And then plug these together, wired it all up, and now the big test. For me, the big test is, do we have any hum when there's no sound. And if we have hum, how quiet is it compared to the actual signal once we play guitar? Maybe there's a bit of hum, but I mean, once we play guitar and it's just like completely gone, that's fine with me. Hiss. Do we have hiss? Do we have feeping? That's very important because that happens when you have digital pedals and a couple of digital pedals. And in this case, I had at least three and it's not perfectly isolated and you don't have a great power supply. And if you have feeping, how loud is it compared to the usable level of guitar? So let's test that. In the video, at one point, I engage all the loops with all the pedals on. So there's eight pedals on going through the open looper in that case. And let's see what the noise level's like, or if there's any. Let's check that test out. 
I was in the room, I tested it, I'm convinced. Zero feeping, zero hum, zero noise, all pedals on, drives, delays, everything, boosts, they work. So what I threw at this was a 130 euro. These two together, 130 euro, 10 outputs, five at 300 milliamps, five at 500 milliamps, it works. If you then later want to continue your board, stick another one in. Done. Um, you could even have a second board. Let's say you have a little fly rig board powered with one of these. Um, have a little longer cable, which you can buy, you know, these adapter cables, and just connect the two boards, and they will need one main lead, and it's going to power your dual board setup. I think other than giving us the information about the milliamps, it's a great system. If you only need nine, get this, get the one with the 500. If you need the option of 12 and 18, add this to your arsenal. They were easily installed under this pedal train style board and they work. And they were still half the price of a DC7, which again, because I have one, I actually have several, is still going to be my power supply of choice. But bang for the buck, this is a ridiculous product. Um, yes, I've worked with Harley Benton a lot. Yes, I've criticized Harley Benton in the past. If it's not good, I'm going to say it. Yes, I'm getting paid for this video. Very important. Okay? Uh, you have to know this. I have to disclose that. But you heard it. I can't fake that. I like the weight. I like the presentation. I like what's in the box. I like that you can combine it. Modular pedal boards should be the thing. Not just modular power supplies, but actual modular pedal boards where you have a small board and a power supply and then you buy a couple more pedals. 
you stick another board onto your board, you stick another power supply underneath, you just, your board keeps growing instead of throwing away the power supply or selling it, buying into one. Modular, I think, for pedalboard aficionados is the way to go. I think Harley Benton did a good job here. I can't fault it in any way. I like the size, everything. It's definitely, if you ask me, if someone's asking me now, my go-to recommendation for a power supply under 100 bucks. 100% because it, it, it works, it's got all the power, it's small enough. Before, I couldn't really recommend something to say. I always said, dude, don't, don't save money on the power supply, don't. But I'm not going to say that anymore because this is good. Thanks for commissioning this video, Harley Benton. Thanks, Leslie, for switching once in this video. And um, animals at the end. And you want oh, no, no. Links below. Use my links. That really helps because that's commission money. So please use my links. Thank you. Now animals at the end. And you won't surrender to the blind leading the blind.